Good morning and thanks for choosing Fox 10 News on this Sunday morning. Today is July the 12th. I'm Asha Staples. Want to check in first with meteorologist Matt Barentine for a look at our Sunday fun day forecast. Hopefully no showers in the forecast. Just a lot of heat. Well, good morning, Asha. I think some folks may want some showers in the forecast to sort of tamp down on the heat, and there will be at least a few of those around, probably more than what we had yesterday. So let's go ahead and check things out. Temperatures could be uh, right now around 70 degrees, but look at Dolphin Island, still sitting at 82 now. The thermometer on Dolphin Island, it literally sits over the water on a dock off the east end of the island, so it's not too far off the water temperature. That's why it's so warm down there. 69 in Gulf Shore, 69 in Lillian. Here's what it looks like on the radar. Pretty quiet out there this morning to start off with. Nothing really close by at this point, but I do think we'll see at least a couple of showers around day. Inland areas might get a pretty decent chance of rain. You can see it here at noon, showing a couple isolated showers to the west. Late at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it'll be blazing hot at that point. If we do get some rain, kind of wide, more widespread, it won't happen until later in the day. So um, it won't help us a whole lot with the, to cool us off. But there could be at least a few storms around late in the afternoon or early in the evening. Here's your planner. Look at those temperatures. They will go right up towards the mid-90s this afternoon, of course. That doesn't factor in the humidity. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll be looking at 105 to about 108, 109 here with our heat index values this afternoon. So it is going to be a very warm and toasty day. There's a heat advisory up once again for parts of our viewing area. So just something to keep in mind. We know this is nothing unusual for us in July. Make sure you drink plenty of water. You take rest during the hottest part of the day. Stay in the shade when you can, all that good stuff. We know the drills. So just stay safe out there. I'll have more details in your forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Matt. In the news this morning, the coronavirus is resurging in the United States with new COVID-19 cases across the nation increasingly rapidly. And, and doctors are worried about more hospitalizations and deaths in the coming weeks. Fox News correspondent Asia Hasney has more. Despite hopes for relief this summer, the United States is battling a major uptick in coronavirus infections. More than 3 million people in the U.S. have now tested positive for the virus, with a growing number of young adults among the patients. Some of the most populous states in the nation are seeing a surge in COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations, or fatalities. Arizona reporting dozens of deaths since Friday, pushing the overall count of COVID-19 fatalities to now more than 2,000. Florida is still breaking records. State health officials reporting more than 11,000 new cases there and 93 deaths on Friday. This is the second time Florida has recorded a single day tally surpassing 11,000. Hospitals throughout Florida will be getting additional shipments of the therapeutic remdesivir. Another hotspot, California, continuing to set records in COVID-19 hospitalizations with intensive care units treating more than 6,000 patients there and more than 300,000 coronavirus cases have now been confirmed in that state. Texas reporting more than 10,000 new cases on Saturday, bringing the total number of infections to over 250,000. Texas also recording 99 deaths on Saturday, ending one of the deadliest weeks for the pandemic in the Lone Star State. But even with the current spike, officials at the World Health Organization say there is still hope for slowing the spread. There are many examples from around the world that have shown that even if the outbreak is very intense, it can still be brought back under control. Overall, at least 33 states are seeing a spike in COVID-19 cases compared to last week. In New York, Aisha Hasni, Fox News. And closer to home, school leaders in Baldwin County taking a big step with thousands of students heading back to class one month from today. They're adding new thermal cameras in each of their schools that in a split second can take 30 temperatures. Scott Hunter at Hunter Security gave us a firsthand look at how they work. And sure enough, after giving himself a 100 degree temperature with a hand warmer was spotted by the camera. They can also pick out people not wearing masks, though Baldwin County Superintendent Eddie Tyler hasn't released yet whether masks will be required. This is the step I think that Baldwin County Schools was proactive and hey, here's a big step we're going to take to help you feel comfortable. The school district is paying about $1 million for 144 thermal cameras and they'll be installed at all 48 campuses.
Coronavirus even impacting local college sports. The Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference is spending fall sports and championships. Spring Hill College reacting to that announcement, saying the school isn't ready to make a final decision on its entire fall sports schedule. Spring Hill is an affiliate member of the Gulf South Conference for soccer and women's golf, so they may be able to still play those. And Prodigy Pantry and Spanish Ford letting people know someone who visited the facility last week has tested positive for coronavirus. That person was in the building on Tuesday during the food distribution. All clients and volunteers who may have been close to the person have been notified and the building has been sanitized. If you haven't been contacted, that means Prodigy Pantry's records show you were not within 15 to 20 feet of the infected person. The pantry will stay open and continue giving out free food to both when county families in need. And you can count on Fox 10 News to stay on top of the coronavirus pandemic. We'll have all the latest breaking developments on air, online, and of course on our app. Former Attorney General and current Alabama GOP Senate candidate Jeff Sessions responding to criticism from President Trump. The president putting his support behind former Auburn football coach Tommy Tuberville in Tuesday's runoff. President Trump calling Sessions a quote disaster who has let us all down. Sessions responding with the following statement quote I've taken the road less traveled not sought fame or fortune. My honor and integrity are far more important than these juvenile insults. Your scandal ridden candidate is too cowardly to debate. As you know, Alabama does not take orders from Washington and quote the winner of Tuesday's vote faces incumbent Doug Jones in November. CNN projections show presidential candidate Joe Biden is the Democratic winner of Louisiana's primary. On the Republican side, CNN projects President Donald Trump is the victor. Both are already the presumptive nominees. Their showings in Louisiana just adds more delegates to their totals. Former special counsel Robert Mueller is defending his prosecution of Roger Stone. The Washington Post posted an op-ed from Mueller on its website uh, last night, and the editorial comes a day after President Trump commuted Stone's sentence. Their longtime friends and Stone work with the president's campaign. Mueller notes that Stone's conviction on seven counts remains, and he's been found guilty of tampering with a witness and obstruction. He's also convicted of lying to Congress, which prosecutors say he did in part to protect the president. The commutation of his sentence just means he won't have to go to prison for his crimes. And switching gears a bit, the debate over whether to swap out the third national Confederate flag with the first national Confederate flag at Government Plaza continues, and it's now stirring up a new conversation and even a petition from locals. The American flag and the state flag of Alabama, the only flags left flying right now at Government Plaza. This after four other flags were removed from the six flag courtyard nearly three weeks ago. According to reports, one of the removed flags is the third national Confederate flag. And if county officials have it their way, it'll be replaced by the first national Confederate flag, also known as Stars and Bars. It's a move supported by some county officials, but not as much by locals like Kendrick Wooten. It was a symbol of slavery and racism. In response to the flag swap at Government and Conception Streets, Wooten created a petition to start a different type of flag conversation. His idea, adding the Juneteenth flag. It is a symbol for uh, the emancipation of slavery that maybe if they don't take the flags down, if they want to have a flag, the Confederate flags up, have the Juneteenth flag there as well to show that we were free from slavery and emancipated from slavery. So far, his petition has gotten a little over 200 signatures in just a week, and he's confident the city of Mobile will unite and support his mission, which he will soon present to the county commission. I would be pretty amazed, you know, just to see, you know, first off, the people came together in the city and wanted to see change. And, you know, with everything going on right now, with all, you know, Confederate monuments being removed uh, and other Confederate flags being moved, removed in the, uh, the states, and also even... Um, with the military, like they're in the process of changing some of these military installation names. Mm -hmm. I just think it would be pretty amazing like, if that were to happen here in Mobile. And we reached out to one official who has been vocal and in favor about the flag swap, Commissioner Connie Hudson, but have not yet heard back. As for all flags in the courtyard, including the state and national flag, will eventually be replaced with new flags. No date as to when that will happen has yet to be announced. Did you ever know that you're a hero? 
man nearly finished walking all the way to Minneapolis to honor the life of George Floyd and others lost in incidents with police. Terry Willis nearing the end of his thousand mile trek along the way. He made stops in Louisville, Kentucky and Ferguson, Missouri to pay his respects to Breonna Taylor and Michael Brown. Willis says seeing others join him on the journey has given him the inspiration to see it through. Once I seen that, I felt like I needed to do something. And as one person, Terry Willis, I'm not an activist. I'm, I'm a carpenter who takes care of his son. And I seen something that shouldn't have happened. And I felt like I needed to do something. Growing up, I didn't have this love. So just to get this love right now from complete strangers of all different backgrounds, I mean, this is amazing. Today, Willis will finish his cross country trek by walking from the Mall of America to 38th and Chicago, the site where Floyd died in May.